interpreter for this session. All right. Um, we are being moderated by a uh, senior urban development specialist for waste management under the Urban Sector Group Department of Sustainable Development and Climate Change for, Asia, for the Asian Development Bank. Prior to the ADB, prior to ADB, our moderator worked as a senior investment operations specialist at the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and as a senior water and sanitation specialist at the World Bank. He holds a Master's of Science in Chemical Engineering from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, is a chartered engineer in the United Kingdom, and a professional engineer of Queensland in Australia. His interests are centered on the development and implementation of new technologies in the context of water security and sustainable waste management. He brings with him over 18 years of experience in the development of solid waste disposal, water supply, and wastewater treatments pro treatment projects in Asia. Everybody, our moderator for today, Mr. Terry Cho. Thank you, Ice. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, colleagues and uh, uh, dear participants. Uh, I'm honored to be the moderator for the number seven which is a very lucky number for our uh, circular economy um, working groups uh, webinar. And then we are very delighted to invite Mr. Stephen Wine, our beloved colleagues from the East Asia uh, Regional Department. Uh, he's the Senior Urban Development Specialist. Uh, let me uh, give a very brief uh, introduction of uh, uh, Mr. Wine's uh, uh, background. Uh, Safin uh, is leading ADB's urban development support to the People's Republic of China and significantly contributes to ADB Y urban policy and related publications. He supports city cluster coordinations, urban rural integration, climate change, adaptation, and spoon cities with natural based solutions, circular economy, zero waste cities. He conceptualized and implement pilots project for low carbon climate, resilient, healthy, and age-friendly city actions and management planning to bring out tangible benefits for the globally uh, emerging uh, four generation urban uh, communities. As reflects effective uh, practitioner, he, his publications, policy dialogue, and project works focus on strategy, uh, urbanization policy, and integrated economic and urban development project design and implementation, promoting socially inclusive and environmentally sound livable cities. Prior to ADB, Stephen leans teams in international consulting firms for sustainable urban planning, urban design, and large building projects in Europe. Uh, North Asia, American and Asia. He taught and lectured at the university in Germany, the United States, the, uh, the China, and he published and contributed to uh, organize uh, international planning for conference. Safin has studied in Stockholm, uh, born in Chicago with an undergraduate in uh, mathematics and a master's in architect urban planning and he's a licensed urban planner and architect in Germany. He's, uh, I think uh, we don't need to, uh, uh, we have no doubt in Safin's uh, professionals and he's enthusiastic uh, in our um, uh, D DMC. And today's his presentation will focus on the on the support and also lesson learned on of the ADB supporting the roadmap uh, for circular economics zero race city in the People's uh, Republic of China. Uh, I think today's he, his presentation will really show us the ways on a practical uh, action plan or roadmap how to support our DMC use different uh, di dimensions of the circular economy so to support the development and trying to uh, decoupling the growth and also 
uh, the generation of the waste. So in the, in the meantime, we can sustain the sustainable development and growth, economic growth, without damaging the uh, um, environment and trying to recycle more uh, recyc uh, resources into the uh, 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 economic cycles. So let us uh, uh, turn the floor to him. Safians, uh, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you. Terry, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to present here and also for your very kind and uh, long introduction. Uh, <laughs> very detailed, thank you for that. Um, so the, the presentation today is on the ADB's roadmap for circular economy, zero waste cities in the People's Republic of China. The context of this is uh, the country partnership strategy from 2021 to 2025, the current one. Uh, we had, uh, after the approval of the CPS, we had uh, prepared a series of roadmaps to help guide the implementation of the CPS for the PRC, uh, and this was one of them. Uh, two others for the urban uh, were uh, low-carbon climate resilient cities and also healthy and age-friendly cities. So this one uh, has received now a lot of uh, attention since this topic has been uh, become more popular, and uh, why is this important? Uh, obviously, uh, we have uh, a huge amount of consumption of materials uh, the, uh, and the linear process of the economy sort of does not really in, uh, internalize the external externalities of environmental and social uh, costs. Uh, and with uh, vast amounts of waste generation uh, with a tendency of growing and East Asia and Pacific is uh, the highest contributor already among the world's regions, uh, generating about 23% in 2016 according to World Bank Group's uh, report, uh, I think it was called What a Waste, What a Waste number one. And in the meantime, we also have a second report, What a Waste number two, uh, <clears throat> with an update on that. Uh, so we have, uh, so circular economy will also address the scarcity of resources by recycling them, bringing back the uh, reco or recovering materials back into the value chain. Uh, and I also want to highlight that it's important for water and land uh, and should also be considered uh, for land, for example, uh, in, the, in the sense of uh, uh, brownfield redevelopment as opposed to greenfield development. You can see here in the background the picture of uh, urbanization slash sprawl in the uh, Pearl River Delta. Uh, uh, the new name is... Uh, what is it? The... Uh, I forgot the, the, yeah, anyway, so you can see that only between the years 2000 and 2010, the, the, the most rapid growth period of this area, uh, a lot of urban development happened, uh, and you can also see that it's hard to uh, understand uh, a logic and a, a coordinated development here. <clears throat> um, the... World Economic Forum in 2014 uh, said that it's it can yield up to 4.5 trillion economic benefits if we uh, recover uh, materials. So it's uh, currently the linear the linear model is really a waste of economic resources. Uh, what Terry also just mentioned already, uh, I think it's really essential uh, and a concept of the U United Nations Environmental Program to decouple uh, growth and uh, well-being uh, uh, increase from the uh, consumption of materials and uh, uh, and then of course uh, disposal of materials as waste. This is a, a big challenge and I think uh, this is also a big challenge of how we understand growth uh, as opposed to development. Uh, maybe that's a bigger discussion that we may also have in ADB. Uh, the some of the key concepts of circular economy uh, like is, is illustrated here by uh, Michael Braungart, uh, a German chemical engineer, just like Terry. Uh, so he separated basically two, two cycles that should be considered when we, when we, uh, when we yeah, conceptualize uh, economy, uh, circular economy in practice. So biological cycles with things that can be, that can be uh, degraded, biologically degraded, and then become nutrients and plants, and then uh, come back as resources into the production cycle. And uh, sorry, and this should be distinguished uh, between the technical cycles, where uh, resource uh, 
effectiveness is almost more important than efficiency so that you produce high quality uh, products uh, and you keep them as long as possible in the in the in the value chain use them return them disassemble them uh, uh, use the technical nutrients back uh, and put them back into the into the production chain so this was uh, this is the famous butterfly uh, diagram from the Ellen Arthur Foundation, also developed by these by these same people, uh, illustrating uh, actual actors where, uh, and and activities that uh, can be considered uh, in the circular economy, uh, yeah, in in the practice and by the different uh, players in the field. So parts manufacturers, product manufacturers. So refer. So you you basically cycle back the things. So you recycle, refurbish, reuse, redistribute maintain, repair, and so forth, and uh, just put a much longer life into the products. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, in the, in the, in the end, uh, the main concept is you, you design out uh, anything that could be considered uh, waste. Of course, in the end, there is a little bit of uh, so something that cannot be recovered. And that uh, I think Stephen Peters is in the meeting. Uh, he can talk about uh, uh, waste to energy of this remaining part in the landfill. Uh, in fact, he had a paper about that uh, published two years ago. Uh, the European Union in, in March 2020 has uh, published their circular economy action plan as part of their European Union's uh, Green Deal. And it's a very ambitious uh, policy and uh, has very specific uh, objectives, uh, including, uh, <coughs> uh, including jobs creation uh, which they which they estimate could be uh, five, uh, could be uh, around 4 million uh, jobs uh, between 2012 and 2018 which is what they what they what they assessed for the past uh, and then they estimate that 0.5% of gdp uh, and creating uh, additional 700,000 uh, jobs uh, would happen uh, in the very near future uh, if this kind of plan could would be would be implemented <clears throat> the PRC, China has had their own very ambitious policies and was an early, uh, an early adapter, early riser, if you wish, uh, in this in this field. They had uh, prepared a circular economy promotion law in twenty eight in 20, 2008, and it became in fact effective in, in January first two thousand nine, which is a quite comprehensive law. Uh, and then uh, in the in the reality, the the focus at the beginning was on reducing or. Uh, yeah, reducing industrial waste and recovering uh, industrial waste resources for uh, for other industrial processes uh, due to the enormous uh, waste amounts and also due to the uh, to the uh, beginning uh, scarcity of resources. So the 12th and 13th five-year plans already included objectives of circular economy and had some pilot program uh, for uh, for circular economy projects and, and cities. The Ministry of Ecolo Ecology and Environment, of, of Ecological Environment, uh, has uh, um, has a program of pilot, piloting zero waste cities uh, since 2019, and uh, uh, we also uh, um, uh, accompany this not not with support but with uh, observation. Uh, we have some some uh, contacts in uh, Tsinghua University in Beijing, uh, people who uh, are actively involved. And the 14th five-year plan also has uh, some very specific objectives, uh, and I put the I put them here in a color code that the same colors I will use later on for for diagram for diagram of how we conceptualize a circular economy, uh, and put it into practice. So here, circular industrial parks and circular production chains, standardized remanufacturing, circular agriculture and organic uh, organic agriculture, reverse recycling model of production enterprises extended producer responsibility and so forth, and also uh, waste materials recycling. So these colors are reflected later on in the diagrams uh, that we have prepared. Uh, <clears throat> other, other things that happened in, the, in, in China are uh, about two years ago, I think in 2020, the big cities were requested uh, to have uh, uh, waste segregation at source. So here you can see a community-based waste segregation uh, uh, or waste disposal facility with the different kinds of uh, waste recyclables and so forth to be separated and then instructions and so forth for how to do it. Uh, and uh, I think some of our colleagues in, uh, in PRCM, they have experienced that uh, firsthand. Of course, we had also some uh, previous uh, ADB operations in circular economy and also currently, of course, we have 
uh, SDCC's Clean and, Ocean and Sustainable Ocean Initiative and Plastic Pollution Reduction Initiative uh, that uh, a RETA that we are trying to link to uh, with our TA that we have with the same name of the project uh, of this of this presentation. Uh, industrial parks we had supported previously, agriculture and bioeconomy, solid waste management improvements. We have supported a, a, a number of projects. Uh, water supply, so recovering or, or reusing uh, treated wastewater is, is one of the key uh, uh, circular economy principles in the, in the water uh, sector. Of course, river pollution reduction, river rehabilitation, flood, flood risk management, uh, and pollute, yeah, is also a, a dimension of um, of circular economy. And then the dimension of land. I mentioned earlier, mining and land remediation and wetland rehabil rehabilitation also follows the principle of bringing back land uh, and value of land uh, to higher value uses, urban uses as brownfield redevelopment. Uh, here are a couple of papers. Uh, the paper two, sorry. That we, that we had done, the paper to the right is from Stephen Peters. Uh, the paper in the middle is something that we have done a, a few years ago on uh, a, a policy brief based on the demand from, from the, the ED at the time in China on, on urban mining. And then we had, uh, and this is the current TA in the, the, the second one uh, to the right, people, so with the green circular economy, zero waste cities is an ongoing TA. Uh, which is also which we're, for which we're also using sort of this framework that we we developed. So using these diagrams uh, that you saw earlier and uh, uh, trying to operationalize it, we 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 simplified uh, this this uh, this objective uh, from this linear take, make, use, and waste model to a circular uh, model in a circular economy, zero waste city. Uh, from uh, design resources, materials in blue, light green, circular economy, life, cy life cycle, uh, life cycles production, distribution and use, share and reuse, and then uh, improved solid waste management, uh, and then bring the, bring the materials and other resources back into the value chain. So this translates into these kind of activities. So overarching objective of circular economy, zero waste city, so is a, is a top top-down and grassroots approach. So top-down meaning as a, as a comprehensive uh, multi-sector, cross-sector uh, uh, effort uh, on the, yeah, arranged on the city level, uh, of course, supported by national policies and so forth. Uh, and, and as a comprehensive program of policy standards, governance, taxes, uh, market-based instruments like tech uh, incentives and disincentives, education and capacity development, uh, because we need really to, to change behavior research and development, IT platforms, uh, private sector engagement, and also uh, developing viable business models. So we have for the, for the design and resources materials input, we're looking at uh, life cycle design of products and processes, comp component reuse from disassembly, and then materials input for, for uh, production to be already uh, recycled uh, materials or recovered uh, components of, uh, of products or even also buildings uh, that can become uh, new, uh, new things that, uh, for, for the use. The, the, I call that the top stream, and then the, the upstream circular economy, life cycles production with bioeconomy, uh, agriculture, circular urban planning, infrastructure and buildings, circular industrial parks uh, with industrial synergies, uh, circular economy in energy and in transport and in vehicles. Uh, then this um, midstream part of distribution, so logistics uh, and use, share and reuse, so we have a component, in fact, in our TA uh, that looks into this as a, into piloting this in several cities. Uh, we have reusable packaging and circular logistics. So reverse uh, logistics, basically. So packages have to have to be transported back to the uh, to the logistics companies and the uh, even the manufacturer uh, at, uh, for the for the end uh, packaging. Extended producer responsibility. Hey, Malvin. Extended producer responsibility. Uh, maybe you're aware of this pro of this concept. So the producer, the companies who produce things, 
uh, have a responsibility to minimize uh, uh, waste, to to minimize packaging, and re uh, yeah uh, take back uh, products and packaging. Uh, uh, basically, over the lifetime of of a product, and then of course there's the the concept of products as a service. Like for example, there's a company uh, and uh, yeah, Philips in in the Netherlands. They are where you buy light as a service and not the bulb. So and then they come and replace the bulb if they have uh, better products uh, later on and so forth. Of course. Uh, the the improving improving waste management is a is also an important part and of course in ADB we support uh, solid waste management uh, projects uh, and I think the key the key concept here is that we have to increase recycling rates and uh, ideally reuse the materials in locally uh, and then there's also of course the dimensions of construction and demolition waste management the construction and building industry produces a lot of waste. Kitchen organic waste management is a big is a big uh, uh, concern, especially in developing uh, countries where the the ratio of such waste is is quite high. And then, of course, now also with COVID, medical waste management has become a very uh, critical issue. Okay, so I we we developed this into a bit further detail. So uh, in, into it's a, it's a roadmap. So we have avenues. Uh, so uh, avenue one, two, three, four, five uh, to with, with specific actions. So so the one, the first one is initiate policies and pilots. The second work with institutions and policy standards, governance, taxes, incentives, and disincentives. So here in this TA, we have the opportunity to work with NDRC, uh, with, who has uh, specifically this uh, midstream uh, logistics pilot, uh, and we're we're working with them on the pilots and then uh, capturing lessons from the pilot and see what kind of policies we can we can promote. Of course, education capacity development. Uh, I mentioned earlier, the private sector is very is obviously uh, an important uh, uh, player in this. Uh, both the companies, but also even the individual consumers, uh, which is uh, addressed in Avenue Five uh, through behavior change uh, promotion. Okay, we can go into more details. I will spare you that. I, this will be shared so you can uh, look into it and if you have specific questions uh, please reach out so this is the this is the ta that i uh, that we're currently implementing um, that we have created from a, a few proposals that were without this title and then we we put them together and then uh, uh, created this overarching objective uh, and then added some outputs uh, and now they're working together, basically. We, we make them work together. And uh, so far, it's quite uh, successful. A little bit of lagging because of COVID, uh, but uh, we have some good results so far. So we have green circular industrial production of Qinghai province. So this is sort of the top stream looking into the, the, the materials uh, uh, input. So then we have a, a downstream zero municipal waste action plan for Guangdong province. Uh, so that is at the uh, from the from the bottom, sort of the, the the downstream part, and then the midstream is the output three green circular e-commerce packaging and logistics pilot program for the PRC. And this has already been announced uh, and is I think right now under uh, bidding. So this is this was announced by the government and now is under bidding for. Uh, companies and cities to to participate and then they would receive some funding from the government okay i think i'll can spare you that and highlight some other things later so on the top stream uh, level design resources materials input uh, i think the key the key component here is that already when we when we design products in fact when we design uh, needs of products i think we should already consider uh, the uh, like recyclable uh, recyclable materials input uh, i think that's uh, avenue 3 i think that's a very important uh, component reduce the the need for extraction and as if it is still uh, needed of course it will still be needed uh, but make that as sustainable as possible so we had a past a ta in also in Shanghai province in 2011, so a long time ago, but after this uh, law was enacted in 2009, I mentioned earlier. So this has already uh, provided uh, an outline plan 
uh, and now we're basically uh, working on impl uh, on implementation and on further refinement of that in this in this TA. The upstream uh, circular economy life cycles production is uh, has also five avenues. I mentioned, I think, before. To me, as an urban planner, I want to highlight that I've, I, uh, that urban planning uh, infrastructure and buildings can also contribute significantly to this concept of circular economy in, in, in this field of uh, planning, uh, land, uh, uh, and also uh, yeah, infrastructure and buildings. So for infrastructure, you can use already uh, or consider to use already uh, recycled materials from construction and demolition waste, for example, or or from yeah, solid waste man, uh, solid waste incineration uh, like bottom ash can also be used uh, as uh, as a, as an input to to concrete and of course buildings uh, as producers of a large uh, amount of waste uh, can also be designed uh, as uh, from a circular economy perspective for example the first level would be you have uh, uh, you make the buildings redundant, meaning you can adaptively reuse buildings quite easily with not with not much effort. For example, between offices, institutional, or even residential, back and forth, through uh, through the design that you that you can uh, apply. And then, of course, uh, use uh, recycled materials, and then of course make the building uh, disassemblable, uh, and. Uh, and then uh, if needed, uh, disassemble it and use uh, components in, in future buildings. We have already supported that and also will continue to do that. In, in fact, in a, in a project we're preparing right now in Jiangxi province in China, uh, the circular bioeconomy uh, in uh, yeah, here for rural vitalization, which is a program also in the PRC. Uh, so the key component I think is, is illustrated on the, on the right side. So production of renewable biological resources and uses value-added products, and then conversion of waste stream back into the value chain also there. Um, a, pro a project that we had done uh, before that was closed, I think, in 2014 or 2015, that you can see on the left-hand side the before and the after pictures on the right-hand side. This was the rehabilitation and closure safe closure of a landfill site uh, along a river. So this is the, the dimension of, of land recovery, land rem remediation, where uh, yeah, brownfield or even, even polluted or poisoned uh, site can be recovered and used uh, as, a, as a park in this case. We have <clears throat> a project in Heilongjiang where we uh, promote a, a transformation from a coal a based economy to a more green and diverse economy and as a as a key output we also have um, pilot uh, mining remediation sites so here's an example of a of a master plan to be implemented in three phases of a, uh, of an open cut uh, coal mine with a quite large area right next to the to the urban center and then by by rehabilitating it re remediating it making it safe uh, urban uses can be uh, can be uh, placed there and the, the area can be opened up of what has been closed for, for the last 50, 60 years to the, to the public. Uh, I mentioned before treated wastewater reuse. Uh, that's, uh, that's something we had already uh, supported in also in, in a PSAD project uh, and also uh, wastewater. We had a sludge utilization policy study, uh, which, is, which is related to this. Uh, some river rehabilitation projects, a very, a very successful one here uh, by, uh, by our colleagues before uh, in Nanjing, the, the Qinghai River was going through the whole, goes through the whole city and was quite, uh, yeah, you can see pic some pictures on the left hand side was, uh, was really environmental challenge, it was polluted and you had uh, shanty, shanty developments alongside and then uh, there was some relocation, but uh, people benefited from the from the development uh, and uh, significant urban environment improvement. So I think this can also be considered in various uh, dimensions as circular economy uh, uh, project. I mean, in the big scale, we make we make a, a city more livable and uh, make that more attractive, as opposed to create. A new greenfield urban development on the on the edge of a city. Uh, that's sort of one of the aspects that we can we can highlight. 
So the midstream of distribution and use, share and reuse, also we, we have envisioned five, five avenues to be, uh, to go along, uh, so reusable packaging and circular logistics, that's something we're supporting in the TA, uh, extended producer responsibility, sharing, the sharing economy has a big uh, role, I think, to play in this, in this whole circular economy, and of course, platforms, uh, apps, and so forth, uh, smart city uh, uh, applications can be developed to, to promote it even further. Uh, products as service, I mentioned, and then it's very important to to, to develop business model to enable private sector investments in circular economy. So I think business models have to be developed to understand what kind of incentives or disincentives are needed uh, to, make, to, make, uh, to make private sector investments uh, in, the, in this uh, happen. This is the SDCC RETA that's uh, by, by Deborah and by James uh, implemented. And I think we're linking into this uh, with with our TA and maybe also with the project. Uh, of course, the, the key is to reduce plastics uh, pollution uh, in the ocean. And then of course the upstream, uh, the upstream part uh, of pollution reduction and uh, management and circular economy, circular business up uh, uh, would, be, uh, would be part of that. I think there was already a, uh, or will be a presentation on that TA. So something we're more familiar with in, in ADB is uh, solid waste management. And I think here, the key thing uh, uh, is to, to really conceptualize and analyze uh, solid waste management in, in a place, uh, have a proper waste uh, characterization and then uh, waste segregation at sort, uh, so, uh, sorting facilities, material recovery stations, and then the, uh, manage the recycled materials uh, so that uh, this can be recovered. Of course, uh, there is a lot of informal um, activities going on with, with waste pickers and then all, all kinds of uh, value streams and they have to be considered and uh, uh, incorporated uh, in, in these activities when we, when we support it. Uh, we have a project uh, that is currently under implementation in, in the province of Hunan. Uh, you can see this is a, quite a big uh, province just south of the Yangtze River. Changsha is the capital. And along the Xiangjiang River, uh, there were uh, a huge amount of uh, yeah, not, yeah, dump sites and uncontrolled dump sites. And uh, uh, we, we, we developed a concept with them over, over several years and then uh, ag agreed to the project. And, uh, so there will be a little bit of uh, landfill mining and remediation and uh, and then of course new uh, solid waste management systems established and sanitary landfill facilities upgraded uh, and i think uh, a new kitchen waste treatment and management system will be established and piloted so this is now i think still under design this pilot uh, and uh, i don't know if our colleague is here uh, jeng bao chang who's implementing this project now uh, the last time he told me this is still under design, this kitchen waste facility. I don't know, Jeng, Jeng Bao Chang, are you here? If not, anyway, I'll give you an update uh, on that uh, later on. Uh, PSOD, our PSOD colleagues uh, in, in China have been very successful to support in, in the support of uh, waste to energy plants. Uh, one company got a big loan, uh, and this is a key player, China Everbright Environmental Energy Limited, uh, and they have uh, uh, yeah, established uh, various uh, facilities. And so my only comment here is that uh, also with, with, uh, with the input of Stephen Peters uh, and, his, and his advice that we really have to make sure that uh, waste to energy facilities or waste incineration facilities are always uh, designed at the right scale so that they don't uh, compete with the more important objective of recycling. So I think that's, that's a very critical uh, issue and that is a very important uh, dimension in China because uh, waste incineration is even a target uh, in the 14th five year plan. So we, we, so we have a little bit of an uphill battle here that we will do uh, with the government and we, do, we, we will fight this battle in projects. 
uh, and also in this TA to make sure that uh, at least in, in, in the areas of influence we have, we, we can demonstrate that uh, the, the waste should not be burned as much as possible. Only the unrecyclable portion of the waste should be incinerated uh, and then uh, energy recovery is even a good thing. Institutional strengthening is uh, critical. In fact, that's, uh, if you wish, the, the most critical uh, dimension of the, the current CPS uh, to China as, a, as an upper middle income country, having already achieved the, the two other uh, graduation criteria and uh, institutional strengthening is sort of the key mandate for all projects that, we're, that we have in China. So this is, of course, also very important in this area of circular economy. So we have cross-sector coordination and cooperation and uh, not only cross-sector, but also across, uh, across um, local jurisdictions to manage waste uh, in a more efficient, efficient and effective way. Cross-sector coordination is very peculiar and uh, very, very important. Uh, China has, like many other countries or most other countries, also the challenge of uh, of departmentalization, meaning silos. So for example, the zero waste uh, cities program is under the uh, Ministry of Ecological Environment I mentioned earlier. The solid waste management, however, is under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development. And uh, there's really some issues even, even in our TA we have uh, to, to overcome. Uh, we have to do simultaneous multi-level engagement on national, provincial, and municipal levels. So municipal pilots should be observed uh, and guided by provincial and national governments, and then uh, lessons captured, uh, and then uh, cast into, into pilot programs and also into uh, policies and technical guidelines on the national level. Uh, policy standards government, it's, this is a key uh, component also in the European Union's uh, plan. So you have to design uh, appropriate taxes, market-based instruments yeah, with the right kinds of incentives and disincentives uh, and education, technical training, capacity development, R&D, IT platform monitoring and enforcement. Uh, private sector engagement is uh, absolutely crucial, so bring them in already at pilot level, uh, have a dialogue with them and uh, uh, prepare them for this, for this new model from linear to circular and also uh, develop with them uh, appropriate business models that could then be used by the pilots and then also uh, replicated and, uh, by, by other companies. Uh, community engagement and, consum and consumer behavior change is a very important uh, factor. In fact, uh, pricing of products, which may be part of policies and standards, uh, is, is also an important aspect to uh, make sure that the externalities are internalized and reflected in prices. Uh, and community engagement is, is important both for the, for the consumption so that people realize uh, okay, do I, yeah, I think we, we, we feel that every day here when we go to the supermarket, no more plastic bags, that's a good thing. And then uh, what do we do? Do we bring a bag? So this, this requires uh, adjustments from, 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 all, from, everybody, from everybody and then community engagement uh, also on, uh, on the downstream part of improved solid waste management, like I mentioned in, in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, uh, where the household uh, segregation uh, uh, has been uh, has been piloted uh, in China, of course, around the world. We have many examples for very successful uh, waste segregation on the on, on the household level already. So this is monitoring results. I think I say that I'm uh, a bit over time, uh, and thank you for your uh, for listening. Back to you, Terry. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, it's a very comprehensive uh, presentations, and now we have. Uh, First, Cesar's questions. Uh, uh, we have two questions. Uh, first, uh, questions about it's great to learn that uh, uh, China has adopted a uh, circular economy in policy and uh, regulations. How do they ensure implementation and enforcement on the ground? What are lessons learned or any best? Practice. That's the first question. Actually, is is actually two two part of question. Uh, maybe also I uh, also talking about the other two, uh, two questions, and then you can try to respond. It. The second question uh, is how does the government incentivize private companies to adopt or comply with these policies? 
uh, I presume uh, he's, uh, he or she is referring to the circular economy policies. And then the third question uh, at this stage is the last question. Uh, it's about uh, uh, colleagues want to know whether the uh, China government has implemented first virgin uh, plastic taxes. I believe for talking about the first times use a plastic tax uh, in uh, vice versa the recycled plastics. The second part of the question is, uh, is there any mandatory recycled content in the packaging or products? And then the last part of the third question is, uh, is, uh, is there any pay as you flow or you unit based pricing for solar waste, municipal solar waste fee. Uh, it's quite a lot uh, a different uh, perspective of uh, questions. Uh, so Safine, please take your time and try to address this one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Yeah, thank you, Terry. Uh, and thank you for the for the questions. Uh, good questions, obviously. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll talk to this uh, from, from Patarapol uh, to Larak. Uh, the first question on virgin plastic taxes, as far as I know, not yet. I think it is, it is under discussion. Uh, NDRC, the National Development and Reform Commission, is in charge of uh, circular economy implementation. They have a, they have a unit uh, inside. And, of course, and uh, the NDRC is the, if you wish, a, a super ministry, with, uh, which is a little bit above the other ministries directly reporting to the state council, the, the government of the PRC. So that is that is really anchored on a high level, and uh, the the pilot that we're doing with them is also uh, a sort of a great opportunity for us to directly uh, engage. Uh, uh, we so what we had agreed with NDRC is uh, that uh, from our side we would we would focus now on this uh, on this output three on this uh, midstream uh, uh, input on uh, uh, re, yeah reusable packaging and in the logistics and packaging uh, sort of the thing and and then later on we will have uh, a dialogue with them on broader policies uh, uh, and uh, and sort of ideas uh, will be welcome also from team members uh, the the team of the ta is quite broad so as far as i know again virgin plastic taxes my, my understanding not yet but they have uh, also banned certain types of packaging mandatory recycle context in packaging a product uh yeah again i think they have they have banned uh, some some plastic packaging uh but uh i think more more can you more can you go pay as you throw uh, not really unit based pricing for municipal solid waste management fee there is a that, that is a key that is the key uh, issue on the policy side so the china currently is uh is very fragmented with uh, with uh, with respect to the solid waste management sector in general, and uh, so there is no unified tipping fee for uh, for dropping off your waste uh, in the in the solid waste landfill or in the in the in the uh, incineration plant, and uh, and there is no unified system of uh, of collection and so forth. Not even a unified system of uh, waste segregation because it depends on the waste characteristics. So uh, we are working with with them, with the Ministry of Housing uh, so right now, with the uh, Department of Housing and Urban Rural Development in Guang, uh, Guangdong, uh, to towards uh, a, a system of policies that would standardize those kind of things. Also to get uh, private sector engaged in the improved solid waste management system i hope that answers the question but there is right now my understanding is there is no unified fee no unified tipping fee and also not for the households um the other questions was on implement on implementing uh implementation how do yeah so so it's great that prc adapted ce in policies law how do they ensure implementation and enforcement on the ground what are lessons learned or any best practices so uh <clears throat> I think the the, the main lessons, uh, as I mentioned, were were from industrial parks and uh, uh, industrial symbiosis, where you have industrial processes with a with a byproduct or a waste, and that byproduct or waste becomes an input for another company or another industrial process uh, of production. So there were uh, a, a number of lessons learned, and uh, 
uh, and then they were shared uh, sort of among among industrial park managers uh, and also of course the the, the local governments uh, to for for better managing industrial parks and uh, reducing the waste and circularizing the waste uh, ensuring implementation and enforcement uh, of course china has uh, strong means there there was a environmental uh, environmental management law environmental protection law uh, a few years ago uh, that significantly improved uh, 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 the policies and also uh, mandated uh, for landfills for example mandated uh, sanitary landfills to be the standard and uh, uh, implementation and enforcement typically is on the local level but then there are inspection inspections by provincial and also national government uh, to uh, to the field uh, to make sure that this is really uh, implemented. It, okay, I see another question. Tao, could you please share some lessons learned on circular economy business models and how to engage private investors in financing for circular economy businesses? So uh, right now, uh, what we're doing is, I mean, we could look into industries, companies to. Uh, to make available their byproducts uh, or waste to other companies or internally produce something else with that that is that is already encouraged uh, and i think the business model is quite clear you 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 produce something so you use it as a resource and then i think the business model for trading uh, these kind of uh, resources and materials uh, you have to you yeah you basically have to discuss and negotiate uh, on the price of, of such goods. Uh, and I think that's happening and that's also uh, facilitated by industrial park managers uh, for these kind of uh, activities. On the, on the uh, engagement of private sector in solid waste management, you could, you could see the private sector projects in, uh, in waste incineration. So there's a, there's a lot of engagement there already. Um, and the, the danger there again is uh, that the facilities are built too large and then really compete with the objective of, uh, of recycling. So waste rec uh, material recovery and recycling because the private sector, of course, they enter into PPP uh, contracts uh, with mandates of a certain amount of waste uh, be deli being delivered uh, to the facility every day. Um, uh, Stefan, uh, we yes. have two more questions. Yes, uh, one is uh, waste by Okju, one is uh, waste by uh, Kim Chen. Shall we uh, invite them uh, to speak uh, for themselves uh, to, to have more uh, direct interactions with the uh, distinguished uh, speakers like yourself? <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, yeah, Okju, can you come in? Okju, can you come in? Okay. Uh, you're, muted. Not... you're muted. You're muted, Okju. I, I am on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. So, uh, thank you so much. So no, Stefan, just that I wanted to uh, you know, hear from you or uh, how the PRC uh, is considering climate change aspect in terms of solid waste management. So you emphasize a lot the environmental and the social uh, aspect and also you know, health aspect as well. But for example, Renfield uh, project or the uh, waste to energy project have uh, some uh, implications on the uh, GHG emission and other climate change factors. So particularly, I'm very interested in the policy or regulations of the PRC on open a landfill, for example. So just uh, you know, have a question, how the government uh, deal with uh, the landfill uh, policy and also uh, you know, your approach, if you have approached already uh, that topic within uh, under your you know, TA context. Thank you. Thank you, Akju. Uh, so, of course, uh, solid waste management uh, has has the both the both aspects of or contributes to both aspects of uh, adaptation and, and mitigation. Adaptation in the form of uh, unclogging sort of the environment and unclogging uh, drainage pipes and canals and so forth, so so that uh, 
uh, that flood risk can be reduced by improving uh, the effectiveness of drainage systems. Uh, and the and, and I think that is that is obviously outside of the environmental impact of uh, uncontrolled garbage uh, in the environment. That's that's uh, a dimension that the government has also, of course, uh, understood, well understood. Uh, uh, we also had a study even from ADB uh, on uh, water logging, on urban water logging a few years ago that, that was also uh, uh, yeah, uh, capturing that dimension. Uh, the circular economy contributes to also uh, climate change mitigation, of course. Yeah, uh, and in fact, there is there's a paper out that we I just saw on on quantifying exactly that. So quantifying the the economic benefits uh, for sorry the the yeah the economic benefits for the low carbon dimension of the circular economy. And I think that was a that was an interesting approach because circular economy is actually has a has a broader benefit, not only uh, uh, mitigation, but also resources efficiency, environmental env and other environmental uh, benefits. But uh, I think the key principle is that you have uh, materials that you reuse and you don't have to mine. Like every material has uh, has embedded uh, energy that doesn't have, so you don't have to burn coal or, or oil for producing new materials and new products if you use them longer and uh, and repair them and so forth. So this this can be quantified and has been quantified and uh, this is also part of uh, part of our second part uh, second phase of the work that we want to uh, promote. So that's why we're also collecting papers and also in our in our projects where we do economic analysis uh, identify methods of uh, of bringing that out but we want to bring it out beyond the mitigation uh, benefit also with the others uh, the other benefits and and try to quantify and find find methods for how to do that and then bring it back to the government and uh, uh, i don't know if that did that answer your question uh yes yes thank you so much stefan thank, thank you. you okay uh, so uh we seven uh, we also have Kim Kim Chen, I think it's Kim Wai Chen. Kim want to raise a very interesting question about the, how to get the opportunity to work in the DMC. So Kim, can you come in? I think uh, if you can speak for yourself. Sure. Thanks, Terry, and hi, Stefan. And first, first of all, thank you for the extremely detailed and great presentation. I will surely review it offline and get back to you, Stefan, if I have questions, but uh, it was very informative, so thank you for that. And actually, before I go into the question, maybe I can actually help respond to one of the previous questions on uh, how to kind of engage private sector. My background is actually, I'm in the Office of Public-Private Partnerships, but I spent majority of my career back in the UK working on waste management PFIs. Uh, some of that spent, you know, supporting uh, lenders and doing their due diligence for these projects. So I guess there's two key things I would like to share when you're looking from a private sector and what they're looking for when they to engage in say the waste management space is one I think is certainty of the waste that will be collected and sent to that facility and I think it was alluded to earlier I think when Stefan was mentioning some of this work that our colleague Stephen Peters has done is to really you know make sure that uh, the end-to-end -end kind of waste planning is done properly if, for whatever region or location it is whether it's city or, or a region. Because what happens is that, uh, unfortunately, a lot of governments just cherry pick a project like waste energy, and they kind of cherry pick, roughly kind of estimate how much you know, they want to process in this plant with no linkage or no rationale to how it links to say, what's happening with three hour or five hour strategies, collection, no kind of strat relationship to what they're doing in terms of say, you know, biomass, so the, the whole thing is not linked. And what that means is that, you know, private sector gets quite nervous because they are fearful of changes in the other parts of the waste, waste kind of value chain, because that will have long-term implications for the feed, feedstock for their project. I remember most of these waste management projects are very long-term, like, you know, waste, management, waste energy projects are 20, 25, 30 year project. So you can imagine things will change quite substantially in those other areas of the value chain. I think certainty of that is really probably one of the most fundamental aspects when you talk to private sector. I think the second aspect is then a very sensitive topic in, in the moment, given COVID and impact on government ability to support projects such as these waste management projects is government subsidies. 
typically, I think we've always been trying to get government to provide, say, subsidies to the feed-in tariffs for these projects. But uh, I think we're more and more we've seen that ability slide away, given the pressures on government budgets. So the question here is then, and it's not something I have an answer for, but where do we plug the gap to make these projects of the private sector bankable and affordable while still being affordable? And I think one of the areas that we, we should consider working more and more with those kind of you know project initiators, whether it's local government or central government, is to think about how you know um, revenues can be increased in terms of charging for the collection of waste. I think, again, that's quite poor in pretty much all the countries that we work with. And therefore, it, it kind of exacerbates the need for subsidies, whether it's VGF or feed and tariff subsidies. I think in the situation that we all find ourselves in the, kind of the next few years with the impact of COVID and ongoing global, potential global recession, I think the aspect really must be looked into. Again, from a private sector perspective, they need certainty of how the project will be funded by the government. You know, to to pay for say the you know the gate fees that ultimately they'll be paying. Uh, so I think those two points I just wanted to share, and, and I'm sure Steve Steve would have kind of provided much more detail than me, but hopefully that was helpful. Um, my my kind of actual question, Stefan, is really about you've done a lot of work in you know, PRC, and it's great to hear. It's, it's very new to me, so it, it really is generally good to hear. But one of the things I would like to ask of you and the team who's been involved in this is, what's the lessons learned in terms of engaging government in PRC? Where, what should and shouldn't we do when we go to talk to governments, whether it's central or, or, or cities or, or you know, regional local governments? What should and shouldn't we do? What are the kind of sweet spots? What are the topics that they are always very keen to hear? And given that the package of TAs in all the different areas, you know, top, up, mid and downstream, is so complicated and such a lot. Where, what should be the entry points for us to go into other DMCs? Because I think that's one of the areas that, I, from what I see, is we struggle in the bank to kind of open those doors. I mean, especially in waste management, we, we really struggle to kind of have good conversations that ultimately enable, uh, you know, very, very good discussions on what technical systems, what loans, what grants could be provided. I think we really struggle with that. So I think from that perspective, I really would like to kind of ask, hear from you, Stefan and team, any advice you could provide to us? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Thank you very much. I fully agree and support your your uh, your earlier uh, points on the requests uh, for the private sector. And of course, but what I mentioned earlier is that the government has to also be very careful on what kind of deal they enter into, right? So that it's it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't conflict with these other objectives, right? So recovery of, in fact, uh, internationally, this is even controversial, uh, like energy recovery from waste in some countries, including my own Germany, I believe is is even considered recycling. So, so in my view, that is not correct. Yeah, uh, because I think the actual recovery of material, that should be the only thing that's considered recycling. So, uh, and therefore, so the, so the official number of, I think more than 75% in Germany of recycled, uh, of recycling of waste is very high. In Korea, it's the same thing, yeah? So I think that is, that is an important part. So when, when governments and private sector negotiate, certainty is, is the key word, as you said, uh, but I think both should understand the overarching objectives and the long-term objectives. And I think, uh, I believe not only in ADB but around the world, circular economy is a, is a major is a major topic and objective. And many countries start to subscribe to it, have their own have their own concepts. So I think if I'm a private sector investor in uh, in uh, waste energy plants, I would make sure I understand that, and in fact be proactive and and discuss it with the government. So from from your side. So low hanging fruits for engaging with the government. So, so that's actually one of the reasons why we broke that out, right? To conceptualize it into whatever these four, these four, the overarching one with policies and standards and so forth. That's something we need to, to engage in uh, on, on the sovereign side with the government. And then, and then I think with businesses, we can engage uh, on all of the four. And, and I think that's the reason why we broke it out into these four uh, top stream, upstream, midstream and downstream so that, I mean, we should have done this uh, 10 years ago, right? But uh, there's a reality and we still have a lot of waste generated. So I think 
any any of these aspects you can start with and then just consider all the other ones right the the lower the lower stream and the upper stream whenever you, whatever you do and i think a very a very uh, low hanging fruit is really uh, improved solid waste management while it is still a big challenge in in many of our dmcs because there's a huge amount of knowledge and experience around the world and best practices of of all of that so uh, waste character i mean all of this is known and I think we we can really help uh, in a very easy way uh, to to identify yeah, make make all the the, the technical support uh, waste characterization uh, uh, concepts of collection and so forth. Uh, so I think that's that's a very low hanging fruit. And then the other ones are a bit more more challenging. But I think depending on the country, you you just see if it's a if it's a, a mining country, you go into the top stream. If it's a producing country you go to the to the upstream and uh, and so forth so but i think it can i think the what we should do uh, i mean in my view we should also almost mainstream this into almost any project because you could by breaking it up in that way you can see ah my project could really contribute so if you do a if you do a whatever a electric vehicle in the in the transport sector you could make you could make that a part of like recycling of the vehicles becomes an environmental issue. What do you do with the batteries? But anyway, any any project could be uh, should be considering how it can contribute to to the circular economy. That would be that would be my my proposal. Great, thank thank you, Stefan. Really appreciate that. And thinking about what our DMCs are, where are they in terms of you know where they're producers, as you say. I think that's extremely a uh, good comment. And actually, your your final comment about you know applying it to all the projects, I think it's quite relevant, given that we're now seeing uh, how we apply ESG principles to all our projects. I mean, I think what you just said is, is it should be part of that, right? I mean, you know, understand how it supports the circular economy. Uh, I think it's 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 a really important point. So yeah, thank you so much. I'll stop here. Thank you. Let's let's touch base later. Yes. Uh, thank you, Stefan and uh, Keen. That's a very, uh, really good uh, interactions and also opportunity uh, to have this kind of the fruitful uh, discussions. And uh, thanks again. Uh, let me take this time to represent the Circular Economy Working Group. Thanks again for Stefan for this excellent uh, presentation. And uh, we hope you enjoy the uh, ongoing upcoming uh, uh, webinar later. And then we will send the survey to to you after work and then uh, thank you again and let's uh, keep our dialogue on the circular economy uh, over and over and uh, try to make our bank become the real climate bank and also to through the circular economy way or others meaning to win thank you and uh, yeah and finally for, uh, thanks for all the participants and all especially our uh, great ladies teams or the supporting team ice and erin okay so thank you see you bye bye thank you terry thank you james thank you ice